Well, thank you everyone for clicking on this video, even if you instantly regret it. Yeah, it's Q&A time. I decided to take a little bit of a different spin with this version of the Q&A video by asking you guys to ask me questions related to things that I've been wrong about or things you think I've been wrong about. I wanted to see what you guys would come up with and see if we can have some fun with it. So if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and get started. If you want to ask questions in future Q&A videos, make sure you follow at OTRS Central on Twitter. M. Route, it's Mr. Route, hooray! He's got some questions about things we were wrong about, I was wrong about. What about the newsletter? What about the newscast style? What about canned heat? Let's take this in reverse order. Number one, Jacole, canned heat was your grand vision. Canned heat was your magnificent idea. And it was incredible. Shame on the people that didn't get behind can heat. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that. Don't you dare try to pass the buck to me. I wasn't even in the freaking time zone when you recorded that episode of Raw back in October of 2011. How dare you, sir? Like, I'd be proud of that creation, Mr. Rao. Come on, Mikey. It's candy! 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 We could use a little more candy in our lives, I'm telling you. Ain't nothing wrong with that one. And it felt so good. As far as the newscast style, God damn it, we're professionals here. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the newscast style. That was great. That was epic. That was iconic. It was classic. That's old school off the rope show, baby. And it was done in response to all the heat we got over that stupid ass newsletter from seven and a half years ago now, if you can believe it. I was so dumb. And I don't know that you could just solely put that on me, but at the end of the day, I could have said, hey, let's think about this a little more. Maybe, hey, let's not do that. But as I've talked about before, Mikey, when you think about something like that, what does it matter now? Because everybody else is sitting there, got Patreon accounts, and they're basically e-begging or asking for donations and so forth. So... You know, at least we put out an inferior crappy product when we were trying to do it. Like, I mean, think about it. Like, the whole perspective of everything changed by the end of the decade. Everybody but me basically has a Patreon account. Maybe I should create one. Jesus, crime in Italy. But nonetheless, the newsletter? Yeah, it was dumb. <laughs> at least something good came out of it, being able to take the couple hundred dollars we actually had gotten from it and taking it and... Um, buying items from eBay to use for a silent auction at the Dan Gable Wrestling Museum as part of that Thago, Trago Stez Hall of Fame weekend, and they were able to double the money, or we were, because we were the ones that ran the silent auction. So we took like 200 bucks and turned in, I think it was like 450 or $500 for the museum cash. You know, it was more money than the museum would have had without us there. So and that was a success. So something good came out of the negative associated with it. Chuck West asks, why do you knock Darlby Allen's ring gear? And he's kind of got that Ravens flock thing going for him is what Chucky says. And can you at least admit that his skateboarding down the ramp is dope? I don't know if it's dope, but it's different, and I can take different. That's fine. Um, as far as Darby Allen's ring gear, I'm not going to say I'm wrong on that. Just, it just doesn't appeal to me. I think it looks ridiculous, okay? I hope that's okay with you. Like we don't have to agree on everything. So I'm probably going to continue to knock it, at least for the time being. Maybe it'll become an acquired taste in due time. And at some point in time, I'll be like, you know what? It's okay. It doesn't matter. But right now, his ring gear looks really kind of bush like an amateurish. I'm sorry. B.W. Rosas, longtime friend of the program. Have you ever been wrong about any of your Royal Rumble picks? I tell you right now that... Reality is, I've been doing this long enough that I honestly don't remember. I'm sure. I'm sure I am. There were some years where it was so obvious who was going to win that you couldn't get it wrong. But then other years, I know there were not so obvious and maybe got them right, maybe got it wrong. Uh, I, I can't really honestly remember, again, the curses of getting older. Uh, James Faluka asked, How could you even remotely make a case that it's okay to leave hateable faces 
like John Cena and Roman Reigns, just as they are with no change. Have I really ever made the case, and maybe this is me like not remembering correctly, or maybe it's you not remembering correctly, I'm not really sure. I don't know if I've ever said it was okay to have your top face get booed by more than half the building. I believe I've been pretty clear about how ridiculous it is that the WWE shifted their whole mindset about how they operate things because they couldn't connect the guys that they want to push with the audience in the way that they once did. So they went from in the making stars business to being in the reaction business. I'm pretty sure I've said that before. Um, as far as it being okay to leave Cena and Roman where they are, I don't think I've ever fully endorsed that, have I? Have I said more along the lines of it doesn't make a difference? Or more so, it's not going to happen, so why bother even thinking about it? That sounds like more of something I would say than saying it's okay. Or if anything, I could think maybe I would have said that with a Cena, if you turn him heel, then he becomes the face, and then just the dynamics are different, and then they don't work. Da, 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 da. I don't know that it's really okay. So, James, to me, this kind of seems like an instance where Maybe I'm off base, but maybe you're just not grasping the full context of what has been said in the past, or you're kind of cherry-picking and picking and choosing, and incorrectly at that. Like, you also made a comment on Twitter that I saw about uh, that guys have to be above average size in order to be a superstar. I've said size helps. That doesn't mean that you automatically have to be. Like, Rey Mysterio was a big star, and he's shorter than I am. Jericho is a big star. He's not much bigger than I am, maybe now, but um, no, size alone is not. You could be big and have nothing else going for you and be a lame fuck. But again, as is so often the case with James and many, many others, they choose to hear what they want to hear and not listen to what's actually being said, and they come away with this out-of-context spin on the crap that I actually do say. Kieran Chase, why would you say... Double J never had a good match, but he had good matches with guys like Booker T and Kurt Angle. Why would you persist to come on here and ask me questions about that Memphis mid-card piece of crap slap box? When has he had a good match? He has it. Why? Because he's Jeff Jarrett. End of discussion. Keys 10. 60-minute Iron Man match. All right, now we're just getting carried away. I see title. Jeff Jarrett in a Michael Jordan Wizards jersey versus... Dolph Ziggler in a Michael Jordan White Sox jersey. Who wins? Nobody except for those that have the courage to go all the way and end their misery and get you the know. Because first of all, MJ Wizards jersey, that's counterfeit fake Chinese crap. That's that type of crap you'd find down at the freaking convenience store. It's fake. It never happened. Michael Jordan, White Sox jersey. Please! How can you be playing baseball when you were saving the universe with the basketball playing aliens called the Monstars? They have Sean Bradley's powers! Sean Bradley! And you're going to ask me who wins? Me, when I stick my foot up your ass for asking that question. Shame on you. Christ, we're official. Oh, let's keep the hits on rolling. I'm sure this is going to be some blasphemous crap, and it is. What's your worst mistake ever? Thinking Hunter is a god? Thinking Jeff Jarrett wasn't a big draw? We're having Dolph Ziggler at the bottom of the ranking. Number one. Nobody's thinking Hunter is a god. I say that he is god. What do your thoughts and prayers do? Nothing. What does Hunter do? Make seven-figure payouts happen for him well after they should at WrestleMania every year. Who's the miracle worker? That's the minute that you can see and believe. Because it's real. And the other two are just ridiculous premises, and they're crap. And you're crap for asking them. 50 Hill Hunters for you. Platon underscore Kenny, why do you think Taker's streak should have never ended even if it could have helped someone else to be a major star? Uh, I believe in the past I said that, and you guys are going back on my memories now, and I forget some of this stuff. Uh, 
it's just one of those things like you had built up Taker Street to such a monster and just such a, such a thing that in part because of all that he given to the company and all the years that he spent there and the loyalty showed and everything else, like the gain that you were going to get out of breaking the streak wasn't really worth it. And lo and behold, it wasn't. Um, I can certainly say they shouldn't have ended it at WrestleMania 30 because that was dumb. There were not positive ramifications on the business for that. I was stupid. You'll never change my mind about that. Principal NYNB. You once said JBL was a great transitional champion in 2004, but don't you think Kurt Angle or The Undertaker would have been a better choice? No. Not if you were going to go all the way to Mania and build it up and have Cena end up beating one of them. I think JBL was perfect for that time and that situation and that environment, and I feel like it worked, actually. Nick Willis, PNW. When will you come to reality and realize Space Jam is a work of fiction and that Michael Jeffrey Jordan played for the Washington Wizards? Why, oh why do you guys persist with these lies in this lamestream, mainstream, hashtag fake news propaganda? He couldn't play baseball. He was saving the universe with the matches. And why would he ever play for the Washington Wizards? He wouldn't! They're all lies! CGI cheat tricks! Just like they freaking did the computer tricks showing the planes flying into the Twin Towers at 9 11. Yeah, I said it! That's what I did! They practiced the CGI there to then try to practice an even greater crime, which is portraying Michael Jordan in any other than a Chicago Bulls uniform in the NBA! Period. Because I'm right. Power spin. Power spy in one. Sorry. Power spy in one asked, Was Yoshi Tatsu even all that as a performer? No. It wasn't really about that for us with him back in the day. It was just the fact that he was a representation, a personification of you got these guys and you don't ever use them. And we kind of looked at him and like, you know what, hey. He could be kind of cool. Like, he didn't have to be a great performer for us to think the guy was cool, necessarily. And, you know, we kind of looked at him as kind of the underdog. Like, he gets treated like crap. Let's see if we can get behind him. And we started the hashtag Save Yoshi Tatsu hashtag, and it freaking trended worldwide on Twitter, if you remember, to the point where it picked up so much momentum over the weekend, they had to address it on Monday Night During Raw. Yoshi had to address it on Twitter. Talking about how he was like, well, that wasn't the point! The point wasn't for you to sit there and be complacent with your damn job. The point was is people like us were trying to help them make it better for you. Better for you! So no, he wasn't even all that as a performer, and apparently he was an idiot. Casey Pena asked, what wrestler do you regret getting behind? Yoshi Tatsu! We could have devoted that energy to getting somebody else over, for God's sakes. Big Carter J, how come one and Double J aren't in the Breakfast Club? Because I say so! Plus, Nash and Hall already have their own click, thank you very much. Hogan is a politicker of epic proportions. He don't need no club. He's a one-man show. And the other one, screw you. Little DJ boy, can you admit if you actually miss CM Punk? You know what? That is a great question. Because when I talked five and a half years ago and ever since really about CM Punk, I'm like, he's gone, goodbye, so what? I don't care. And I felt that way for a long time. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's missing him per se, but it's almost like it is so bad now, so, so bad, that even having him back just part-time every once in a while would be such a welcome sight. So I could say maybe it was just a teensy weensiest itty little bit. Maybe I miss CM Punk, because that makes you happy. Abdullah Hep C. How much has your opinion changed on Hogan over the years? Well, in the recent years, a significant amount. Um, here's what I say about Hogan. He said racist crap, which goes against so much of what I believe in and so forth. 
So it's kind of like fundamentally ruined them in a way. But so many things that happened positively in my life also happened because of professional wrestling, and that is due in large part to Hulk Hogan. Like for some people, that context is not good enough. For other people, maybe they understand. But I cannot just wipe away the ignorant crap that he said. But that also doesn't mean that I won't call out BS when it comes to Hogan getting all the blame and people that have allegedly said racist crap over the years like Ric Flair seem to get away with it. Like it's a cool thing now. No, he's done some stuff. Austin, the freaking wife beater. Tyson, the convicted rapist. Whether you believe it or not, he ultimately was a convicted rapist. Jimmy Snuka, the killer. Like I go on and on and on. Um... So it doesn't change the fact that I'm going to call that out. Or when I see idiots like Meltzer will try to diminish Hogan by saying Austin was a bigger draw. What the hell are you talking about? Or you'll have other idiots say that Flair was a bigger star than Hogan. You're insane! When Hogan was the top guy in the WWF in the 80s, they were kicking Crockett's ass in later WCW. And then in the mid-90s, when he came over, WCW, two years later... Here's Hogan, NWO, and now they're kicking WWF's ass. Like, you can both hate the guy and acknowledge basic historical facts. You hate Hogan all you want. That is fine. He deserves it. Especially for his lack of real contrition and remorse for the ignorant crap that he said. But it won't change my opinion about the fact that he is the biggest star in the history of the professional wrestling business. He's the biggest draw in the history of the professional wrestling business. Both of those things can be true. Is that he's a piece of crap who said racist crap and is also the biggest star of wrestling ever has seen or ever will see. And if you say, well, The Rock, The Rock became much bigger as a movie star than he was as a wrestler. As a wrestler, Hulk Hogan is the biggest star ever. Ever. Rick Styles, was John Cena really all as bad as you made him out to be? Hell yes! Just because he's gone now, and he barely shows up, and it doesn't really matter what he does, doesn't change the fact of all the damage that happened during his decade of doom. Yes, he was every bit as bad as I made him out to be, and worse. And just because the other people that come on here now on YouTube and do this stuff like I do are in their early 20s or younger, so they grew up with Cena and automatically think that what happened with Cena was great. It wasn't! Some of the storylines were hokey crap and predictable as hell. His character was stupid. A lot of his promos suck. Can't even execute his damn finisher. All the burials that happened because of him. I go on and on and on. And if you say, well, Hogan did a lot of the same crap. Hogan drew significantly more money for a longer period of time than damn Cena did. That's a fucking sure. Not even a valid comparison. Yes, Cena was every bit as bad as I made him out to be, if not worse. Just because he's happy-go-lucky, don't give a crappy John Cena anymore doesn't change the fact that Cena in his peak was as selfish as anybody in the history of professional wrestling. Dylan Schwartz, were you wrong when you said the fans complaining about Daniel Bryan not winning the Rumble going into Mania were not going to change anything? Yes and no. Obviously, in that brief moment of time, in that window leading up to WrestleMania 30, all that bitching and moaning and complaining, uh... He ultimately got into the main event of WrestleMania 30. It's absolutely true. So, wrong about that. But then, you also have that next part of that. And again, this is where context is important. No matter how much you bitch and moan and complain about wanting them to change something and get behind somebody, if they don't, it's never going to happen. That's also part of the conversation in context from 2014 that, again, conveniently gets left out, is... You're looking back and you're saying, okay, even if they put Daniel Bryan in the spot, they're not going to get behind him. And they didn't. What happened? His first title feud was against Kane! It was against Kane! It was like it was an inconvenience to them until they could do something that they cared about to get the damn belt off of him. And I know he had injury and everything else, but you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I was wrong that it didn't change the main event. Yeah, maybe, but... What did it matter? And then Canadian citizen number 273 asks, uh, why do you think 2019 is worse than 2010? Because at least 2010 didn't have Linda's Senate campaign. You know, if you're going to make that argument, 
then that is a good place to start that argument because 2010 was really, really bad. I will confess, I will agree. 2010 also had TNA, the appearances of Hogan and Bischoff, a lot of the dumb crap they did that year, a whole effing show. 10, 10, 10, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming! So, I will say this. Perhaps because it is now 2020 and 2019 just happened, and my interest in wrestling is at damn near historical lows for me, and I was more interested in 2010. I also had friends to watch wrestling with back in 2010, even though we used to bury most of the shows on a given week. I could potentially give you that, that maybe 2010 is equal to or worse than 2019. Yeah, it was really, really bad, too. Oh, oh my God. So anyways, thanks to all of you guys for asking your questions. Even though in most cases, I'm still right. Yeah, and that's why you, you like this show. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Because when you know it, it comes down to nut cutting time more often than not. Hashtag Schlag Daddy was right.